Alright everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode. So as you saw from the title, we're going to be installing the TB Performance uh, rear strut mount. And I'm going to go through real quick what tools you're going to need to install this. So the directions are online. Um, they're kind of hard to read only because of the color palette that they chose, like purple against black background. But I'm going to make it easy for you and I'll post it down in the link so you guys can copy and paste the print with it however you want to do it. So first and foremost, they give you two options of how to install this. Uh, the easiest way to go is to invest in a insert slash uh, rivet gun. So I got this one from Harbor Freight. Um, pretty similar prices on eBay, uh, which I will drop the links down below for both eBay and Harbor Freight. Um, it's very simple to use. I actually put up a, a, a YouTube short a few days prior to this video. So why don't you go check that out in case you want to see a quick run through. Um, because like I said, it's, it's not, it's not hard. Uh, and there's a better view of how to use it, uh, on, on that short. The other thing is you're going to need a quarter inch or three eighths, how, whatever size you want, uh, ratchet. But what you're going to need is your, your, your socket size is going to have to be a standard. So if you do not have any standard size sockets, this might be a good time to go get one or, you know, a single three eighths, uh, uh, box wrench. So you're going to need that. You're going to need a drill and a three eighths bit and the three eighths bit. I used the back end, the flush side of the bit to match up against the insert that, uh, is that has come with the, with the packaging. So they do send you about six, two, four, five, two, four. Yeah. So they send about six of these little inserts. Okay. And then you have your four bolts. So this is the main way they suggest that you insert them. And then you're going to snug it down. You're not going to tighten it and you're going to snug it down because eventually if you over tighten it too much, you could, you could cause the, the uh, rivet to uh, break loose, even though they do have these little teeth on the back. I'm not sure how well you can see that. So the other option is uh, they tell you what size uh, nut and washer that you can buy after you drill a hole. That hole would be a quarter inch um, drill bit, which you would go the same method that I'm about to show you. You would drill through the side hole of the wall. And then from there, you would have to make sure your car is elevated, have your rear wheels off probably like another person would would be helpful with that nut and washer and then you would mount it on but we're going to get going to the easiest way which is using the insert slash rivet gun and um we're going to try and knock this out in about 15 20 minutes my time 10 minutes your time So first and foremost, I already cleared out the trunk, got all, all the crap out the back, even the, um, the, uh, air pump and the, um, speaker system. So, so as you can see, here's your strut area right here. So we're going to have to line this up with that. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Hold on, let me go and get a hammer. So I got a dead blow hammer.
<laughs> All right, so I got it pre-lined up. So just a heads up, because the car is down and the suspension system is loaded and pushing, it might be a little bit more difficult to get it lined up. But definitely get yourself a dead blow hammer or like a rubber mallet to kind of guide that into place. So now, once we have it, once you have it set where you want, so I would say the best place, the best thing to do is line it up with your caps. So these caps are where your uh, rear shocks line up. So I'm trying to get this lined up with the front half, the front half. All right, so I'm lined up. So the back of these caps. So these caps right here. So this is literally lined up halfway from the from back to front. And same thing, lined up halfway from back to front. So now they're lined up to even. There's like a little metallic notch down here at the bottom. So that little nub right there, that's what I'm using as my marker. It's a little bit more pronounced on the rear driver's side than it is on the passenger side, but it is there. So now some your Sharpie. So I'm not sure. Yeah, no, you're not gonna be able to do that. So if you're thinking about drilling through the hole, you're not going to be able to. Um, it's, it's definitely, the hole is too small, giggity. Material, I'm going to use a screwdriver and tear the material of where I want to be. Or even better, let's be smarter about this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drill a pilot hole using the markings of where these are already. So I'm using a 3 16th to drill this pilot hole. A few moments later. All right, so I'm back. So that was a little bit more out of a pain in the butt than I was hoping for. Um, but anyone who has to drill through um, metal or has experience drilling through metal, you definitely want to make sure that you're uh, lubricating your drill bit, either like some lubricant, like automotive lubricant or like uh, just like soapy water to keep that drill bit going. But I was able to get everything in. Um, I was able to uh, get the uh, the um, inserts done. Uh, just a note, try to have this as loose as possible before like, so you have this backed off all the way. And then once you do get that insert all the way up, butt it on, and then give it like one good squeeze. The trick is gonna be when you're backing it off, you want to maintain the level of this and get like some adjustable pliers and then just constantly just keep rotating this wheel off. I might have to lubricate this a little bit so I have a little bit easier spin next time I use it. But we're set to go. So now the next part is going to be getting the uh, strut tower brace back in before my battery dies. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to just get this in, cut straight to it, because you guys already seen me line it up once. And then I'll bring you back before I put all the all, all the crap back into the trunk. 
All right, hermanas y hermanos. We're done, at least, you know, for the install part. So I'm gonna show you, walk you through it right now, and let you know some things that I came across while installing this. So before I turn it around, the first thing you guys know that um, lifting the, the rear end of the car up may be a big help to relieve some of the pressure on the rear end of the system to you know basically give you maybe like a quarter to a half inch maybe even a few sixteenths of an inch of space um if you're not going to raise your car up definitely get yourself a dead blow hammer or a rubber mallet in order to get yourself lined up um second thing is um make sure you have some wd-40 or uh soapy water because as you're going to be drilling through your um your 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 metal sheeting on in the trunk uh that 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 tip is gonna get hot yeah it's gonna get real hot but you want to keep it from locking up you want to you know spray um a few dabs at it as you go um once you puncture through you're gonna feel a little bit of a pushback and that's because there is like a metal like aluminum plate on the other side that you're gonna feel some pushing back on once you feel that quick little pop through don't even keep pushing get like yourself a small flathead screwdriver and see if you can get through there. What I did was I took one of the screws, I, I uh, spun it onto one of the inserts and I pushed it through to make sure my clearance went all the way through. So let's look at the bar. All right, so we are nice and solid. So as you can see here, you know, we got some metal shavings and whatnot. So I clean them up as best I can. I'm gonna go through and vacuum it once I'm done, but I've got my I got my nuts in, yeah, my nuts. They are uh, lined up and in with the inserts. And again, um, you don't have to crank down them. You're gonna go till they are, I wanna say like snug. So I have one of these little snap-on guns, these little interior guns. It doesn't apply a whole lot of torque. Once it gets to a certain amount of resistance, it just locks up. So this is really good. Do not use an impact driver or impact gun at all to uh, service that. So on the other side as well, um, I had one issue because there is like a, a sub uh, lining piece of metal. So it kind of two steps the uh, area where I had to drill through. So this actually, I had to start this one first, then come back over to the other side, do the top to hold it up so I can line up the bottom and then come back and and bolt up the top. So you just kind of start them. You don't actually put them all the way through. So if you if you start the bolts, it'll give you some of that wiggle room that you'll need to kind of line everything up. Again, use your dead blow hammer, nice and gentle. The, the, the hardest part is gonna be getting in the rivets. Cause like I said, that bottom passenger side one, I had to use uh, three inserts in order to finally get it kind of locked in. I had to really, really like force it all the way in, hold it, and then be very, very gentle as I was backing it off. Um, but now that's pretty much it. We're set up, we're good to go. Um, from what the website says, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space. So I should be able to get my stuff in, no problem. If I do, I will let you know at the end of this video. If you don't see nothing after this, it's okay, it's all good. Rinse daily. <laughs>